Hello everyone and welcome to another really exciting game from the US Championship 2022. It is Wander Liang versus Levon Aronyan and if you liked yesterday's game between Anand and Darjun as it was uh, an incredibly complicated game you will also enjoy this one. Plus it uh, or it resembles a game, not resembles but to, to a certain point it follows the game Paul Morphy played 167 years ago so it's um uh, very exciting stuff and now let's check it out. I wonder has the white pieces and he opens with e4. We have e5 by Lavon, knight to f3, knight to c6 and now striking in the center with pawn to d4. Uh, so a nice scotch game, e captures on d4 and now bishop to c4 going for the scotch gambit and now uh, bishop to c5 and here you can uh, well there are a couple of moves you, you could consider here c3 is the main move. Uh, there are even some ideas that b4 can be played here even though it was never never attempted, uh, I'm just, uh, it's my idea. Uh, but here, knight to g5, the Sarat variation is what um, I wonder goes for, and it's a very very old line. Like I said, um, it was uh, present when uh, when Paul Morphy played chess, and it goes after the f7 pawn. Now, the only good way to defend it is to defend with knight to h6, which is what Levon does. Knight captures on f7. Uh, knight captures with bishop captures with check king captures and now the position of the bishop on c5 is what makes the sacrifice on f7 possible so it's not really a sacrifice queen h5 check g6 and now queen captures on c5 uh, winning back the piece and now uh, the game uh, reached the point that um, uh, Alexander Balfour Meek had against Paul Morphy uh, in 1855 so 167 years ago and Paul Morphy played d6 in this position it's a, a very famous game where Morphy uh, harasses the white queen and in the end forces the white queen to go back to the starting square to d1 before uh, he, he ends the game brilliantly uh, I, I can even show you I, I'm pretty sure I made a video on this game I just uh, have no idea how I named it so if any of you know what it is uh, feel free to share with, with everyone so they can check it out uh, but even though uh, uh, I, I, mean, I mean I'm pretty sure I made a video on it but I'm going to show you the game after we check out this original game so here pawn to d5 instead does not follow Morphe's advice of pawn to d6 and now uh, we have pawn to c3 and this pawn to c3 is a new move in the position there have been some attempts of castles also queen captures on d5 check has been played e captures on d5 advancing the pawn to e5 has been played but c3 is a new move so now already as of move 10 we have a completely new game so here we have uh, e capture uh, d captures on e4 by Levon and uh, Liang just castles and now how do you continue Levon has a d pawn and an e pawn and they're, they're incredibly impressive imagine if you can get something like d3 going uh, I mean uh, what could go wrong the problem is the king is on f7 the king has no pawns just f3 I mean this will be a uh, devastating bishop coming to h6 this is a very very hard to play so Levon says all right let's bring the rook into the game you can have one of those pawns c captures on d4 queen captures on d4 Levon would be very happy with a queen trade of course uh, but a wonder says nope queen to g5 uh, and now comes knight to b4 here it would be much safer to play something like bishop to uh, f5 but knight to b4 is uh, incredibly interesting because uh, here Levon wants to play a knight to c2 to go after the rook on a1 and uh, it doesn't seem like you have all that many great moves here but uh, I wonder plays bishop to d2 and now you realize that if you go for the rook with knight to c2 bishop c3 attacks the queen guards f6 guards g7 uh, you will not be able to defend this position if queen here guarding this square then just queen h6 uh, I mean it's a completely completely uh, d disgusting to defend this with black uh, and especially if you capture the rook then just queen captures on h7 king e6 and now let's say knight to a3 uh, there's no escaping uh, with the king all of the squares here are being covered rook is coming to d1 at some point I mean uh, terrible so after bishop to d2 Levon says all right the knight to b4 might not be such a great idea and he plays queen back to d6 uh, and now what do you play uh, here okay you could try uh, a lot of different ideas but Aliyang just continues to develop knight to c3 c6 now uh, the, um, uh, preventing the knight from uh, going any deeper and now rook a to d1 uh, we have bishop to f5 and now there is um, uh, well there is a way to break through uh, black's position here but you have to be very very precise so feel free to pause the video as Levon is already lost on move 16 uh, while I give you a couple of seconds and find the uh, the brilliant idea
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting either of the two ideas. One is F3, one is G4. F3 can be played uh, simply to open up the F file and uh, well, black would have to capture here. Otherwise just captures will win the game. So let's say captures, captures, and then G4 is coming. There's really not much you can do about this. But instead G4 was played. It's very similar uh, now uh, just attacking the bishop. And uh, there's really no good way uh, to, to move the bishop here. Your, your bishop is hanging and if you play something like bishop to d7 uh, then you put the bishop uh, in front of the rook something like let's say knight b5 attacks the queen and if c captures on b5 bishop captures on b4 and now you can't capture because rook captures on d7 checks and um, you're just gonna get destroyed so you can play something like queen e6 but now h3 and again uh, it's not much not much of a material advantage but the, the black king is wide open on f7 uh, you, you will not be able to hold this. So instead, uh, Levon finds a very tricky idea. He plays h6, offers the h6 pawn, but of course for the moment the pawn cannot be captured. If you capture rook to h8, and now uh, Levon is the one who is in trouble, and you have to play some very, very precise moves here to, uh, to, to get out of this. Like knight captures, you attack the black queen after bishop captures. Now you can play bishop captures, attack the black queen again, and as the black queen moves to keep an eye on the h2 pawn, now you play bishop bishop to d6 and now you force a, a queen trace I'm like captures captures and bishop d5 uh, you would get uh, to, to, to play this end game uh, but of course you do not want to throw away all of your advantage so Liang just goes queen back to h4 uh, and now the bishop is still hanging. The problem is, and this is why g4 is so strong, and uh, no doubt why all of you found it when you paused the video, bishop to e6 uh, loses, bishop to d7 loses, and bishop to c8 loses. And Levon played bishop to c8, but it's such an ugly move that I feel that it is necessary to discuss why bishop to e6 is bad. Well, okay, rook no longer guards the e4 pawn, just knight captures, attacks the queen, gains access to all of these squares, bishop now can come to c3. Uh, this is pretty much self-explanatory. Now, uh, the other idea after, uh, 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 for example, the retreat of the bishop to d7, is now that not only the queen is a target here, but also the bishop. And now you can play bishop captures on h6, and after a move like knight to d5, blocking the rook's uh, attack towards the queen, now you play f3. And after e3, keeping the f-file closed, now knight to e4. Again, attacking the queen. Once the queen moves, because you have to keep an eye on this square, otherwise just captures and uh, queen to f6, you can play rook f to e1, and after rook to h8, putting the uh, rook here, now even rook captures on e3 and there is not much you can do. Rook captures runs into rook captures on d7, and now if queen to f4, which is a very tricky idea, as it seems like you're offering the queen, uh, but white can uh, even trade here. Rook, uh, bishop captures, rook captures, and after bishop g5, rook h back to h8. And now knight to d6 check, for example, king to g8, and uh, as the rook is hanging, rook to e2. So you would get some sort of a position like this where it's very unpleasant for black to play rook to f8, you can defend the pawn with king to g2, and you get something like this, with white having two uh, fully active rooks, the bishop is beautiful on g5, h4 is coming, the knight is spectacular on d6, and the black rook's not really doing all that much, the knight and the bishop are in a... Uh, well, uh, I'm pretty bad square, so this would be uh, uh, winning for white. So those are the two options, and also one of the reasons why, uh, why Levon after g4 played the bishop all the way back to c8. But now, even though there aren't any tactics against the bishop itself, the rooks are no longer connected, and therefore you don't have to fear rook to h8. So now, uh, Liang just captures on h6. Uh, and okay, the queen is now hanging, so knight to d3, and now bishop to g5, preparing queen to h7, check. So queen to e5, preparing to go back with the queen if check is delivered, and now uh, pawn to f3, just uh, hoping to open up the f file, and there's really no good way to, um, uh, to counter this. You can't really capture or push the pawn, uh, because then the knight hangs, so you, you have to just wait and hope for the best. Here, rook to h8 is played, as the queen also covers the h8, square now f captures on e4 opens up a discovery here king to g8 now bishop to h6 beautiful uh, prevents uh, rook captures queen but also threatens rook to f8 check so queen to d4 check king to h1 and now bishop to e6 again uh, connecting the rooks not really as the king is in g8 but sort of connecting everything and now queen to g5 preparing queen captures on g6 so bishop to f7 and now of course you're not gonna allow Levon to 
set up some some sort of a defense here just rook captures on f7 uh, and now if king captures uh, then rook to f1 check and you just go on a nice king hunt even if uh, knight to f2 check you can just play king g2 and still you're gonna capture this knight if king to e6 you try and run away rook captures and after rook 8 to g8 guarding that g pawn you can even play e5 and that's just it there's um uh, there, 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 there's no move you can play here. Knight covers these square, so no checks are possible. Uh, if queen captures, then rookie two just uh, captures the queen. Um it resigns so what uh, you have to play here after rook captures on f7 well you have to resign but of course Levon will try a few more tricks rook captures on h6 is what he played now rook captures on d3 it's not mandatory you could also uh, play other moves but uh, it just eliminates any any uh, counter chances Levon might have queen captures on d3 and now of course not uh, queen captures on h6 and allowing king captures here but a nice queen to f6 now threatening checkmate here so can Levon defend this uh the problem is um the, the, there's no way to check the the white king the b1 square covered by the knight this is covered by the knight this is covered by the queen this is covered by the queen and those are basically the four squares that the black queen can use uh to, to check the uh, white king and also this is defended by the knight uh so there are no checks here Levon has to give up the rook uh, in order to uh, try and get some sort of a perpetual there is the maybe interesting uh, uh instead of just going for rook captures on h2 right away you could try uh, some checks but it's uh, very hard to, um, uh, to, 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 to actually do them uh, as they're not possible yet so first you have to play rook captures on h2 king captures with queen to d2 check king to g1 and now queen to c1 with check king to f2 and now uh, queen to h6 stopping checkmate the reason why not queen captures on b2 is uh, very very interesting but uh, we have to show it now you're not gonna move the knight and allow the trade of queens you're gonna play king e3 now look at this queen c1 check king to d3 you even allow rook to d8 check because now if queen captures rook then king captures rook on f7 now king to c4 you even allow b5 with check you move the king to b3 and now there are no more checks and of course you are getting checkmated once queen h6 is played g5 comes and that's just it the queen has uh, doesn't have access to these squares uh, and of course once you move the queen you get checkmated so after king to f2 queen to h6 was played right away uh, in, without going for all of that but now pawn to g5 and it was in this position on move 32 that Levon Arunyan resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here uh, so very nicely done once the queen moves of course checkmate is coming so beautifully played by by a wonder and uh, for those of you who are interested I will now show uh, how the game went from that position uh, in the game between um, between Meek and uh, Paul Morphy and for those of you who are interested uh, leading the tournament now is Fabiano Corwana with three and a half points and the Wonderling and Samuel Savian are tied in second and third with with three points but now let's go back to this position and I have to let let Medo in the room uh, I, I can hear him coming now again there's some food being cooked down there so uh, Medo is uh, you know uh, watching if everything is prepared properly uh, but yeah uh, after queen captures on c5 Levon played d5 here against the wonder but uh, Morphe played the d6 against Meek and now let's just quickly go over that game as it's quite a nice one so now the queen is already hanging we have queen to b5 and now rook to e8 Morphe of course goes for the white king queen to b3 with check and now only now pawn to d5 by Morphe but now of course uh, opening up the e-file is not something you want to do so pawn to f3 defending and now knight to a5 Morphe further continues harassing the white queen queen to d3 here queen to b5 repeating uh, would be would be slightly better and then if c6 then you can bring the queen to e2 but okay uh, meek played queen to d3 and now morphe captures on e4 with tempo as the queen is hanging f captures on e4 and now queen to h4 with check g3 rook captures on e4 with check king to f2 and queen to e7 now uh, preparing to bring the bishop into the game and uh, land that rook on f8 so here knight to d2 was played attacking the rook but now rook to e3 as bishop no longer covers this square 
queen to b5 going after the knight but morphe now says come on are you serious he plays c6 and he offers up the knight uh, but the knight of course cannot be captured as the queen must guard the e2 square so queen back to f1 and now the beautiful bishop to h3 again morphe offers the bishop to, uh, to free up the e2 square if you capture then rook to e2 check will just uh, end in a, a very very nice checkmate queen to e3 with check king g4 h5 with check and that's it now you either give up the queen or king to h4 and queen to e7 will be checkmate so instead of all of this after bishop to h3 uh, morphe forces meek's queen all the way back to the starting square king, uh, queen, queen to d1 uh, and now it's a, a, a matter of rook to f8 this is what morphe played uh, and it was uh, in this position on move 20 that uh, alexander meek resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here actually maybe it's not in this position that he resigned i'm pretty sure it's in this position position but uh, i will check uh, i don't want to trick you guys let me just check Ah, no. okay so it's not in this position knight to f3 was played uh preparing to sort of kind of block check but then morphe played king to e8 and it was in this position that um, uh, alexander meek resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here problem is uh well I mean problem is look at your position uh let's say rook to e1 now will offer a trade of uh, rooks here and maybe uh, remove some of the attackers the problem is you can just play rook captures on f3 and remove the all of the defenders of the rook on e1 uh, let's say queen captures on f3 rook captures on f3 king captures now queen captures on e1 and uh, that's pretty much it nothing much to be done here whatever you play let's say b4 it's a matter of a few checks before you get checkmated queen d5 and that's it all of the squares are taken from the uh from the white king if g4 g5 checking g3 and queen g2 for example will be checkmate but of course miki did not wait for all of this once morphe played king back to e8 uh it was in this position that he uh, resigned the game but what, what what is incredible about this game is that uh meek sacrifices to uh, sort of uh, uh harass the, the morphe's king and force the king uh, away from the starting square and then the queen of course uh, jumps into the attack but then morphe forces the white queen all the way back to her starting square while he brings his king all the way to his starting square so uh, it's uh, not only an, an, an impressive game and a very precise game uh, but also a very very poetic one uh so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys you know, those were the games hope you guys enjoyed that never ever doubt Paul Morphy and the good things will happen to you uh, I would like to thank Red Rose Kerrigan David Masse Matthew Benoit and Ravishing Reptiles YouTube for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it as usual you can check to all my previous videos here thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage uh, of everything that's currently happening in the chess world and checking up on your wonderful suggestions uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.